Tibor Interim, the first one of 2021. Happy New Year. Um, yes, so this is an ITF meeting and the note well applies and uh, you are being recorded. And also please go to the Code EMD I have posted if you haven't already and uh, write down your name there. But I think everybody has done so or Christian has done that. Thank you, Christian. So first of all, I wanted to do a, a, a little intro. Um, first of all, we have a new co-chair. Christian has agreed to co-chair Seabor. So thank you so much, Christian. I'm looking Hello, forward everyone. to work with you. Yes, and I, I think most of you, if not all of you know Christian. He's uh, very active in other working groups as well, and really a uh, great, great guy. So really looking forward to working together. Um, Welcome. Yes. And OK, so the next item on the agenda would be the working group document status and issues. And I got your email address then at uh, for some reason, you missed the uh, the meeting, so it's good that I reminded. <laughs> so we don't have any updates today. I was especially looking forward to um, the oil document. Um, so I can maybe do a quick recap of what's the status of that one. And then if you want to say anything or if you have any update, let us know. So um, the working group last call has ended a while ago. And um, I was a bit late, but I have done a review now and it's posted the main list and I haven't seen any reply to that one. And also, I was hoping to get a uh, couple more eyes on it, like even very loud. Tone. Even if it's not, uh, <laughs> no worries. Even if it's not a, a very detailed review, but just the approval of uh, uh, that someone else has, has, has looked at it and think that it's, it's good to move forward. And I think Kasten, you mentioned that you know you knew of someone else who was who was going to do that, but I haven't seen anything yet. Yeah, I haven't seen that yet either. Okay, so if you knew that, maybe it would be good to ping, or because right now it's really um. I, we had a yeah we had a two two weeks working group that end in November and there has been some discussion in the mailing list about the draft but I think I haven't had any uh, reply to the thread and I would like some reply to the thread. Um. So if you can ping uh, who whoever it was that uh, had. Uh, missed you or 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 volunteered for for a review that will be good just send out a ping mm -hmm. okay and uh yes and let me know if you have any i i mean my review was uh, nothing major was just some comments but yes it's still there so <laughs> you're aware that it's still open and uh, I would expect, uh, let me know before we, we do any shepherd review. Yeah, so I, I was expecting to do another update of the document based on the uh, reviews, and I was kind of waiting for that other review to turn up, and then it turned. Christmas and I forgot about the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, of course. 
<laughs> of course, I understand. Which is why we have these meetings, right? Yes. So, so that's good. So that's the status for that document. Uh, our other working group documents right now are the CDDL control and the Seaboard Pact. And we had some um, uh, progress during the meeting, uh, but we haven't seen uh, any updates. So we need to decide on uh, what to prioritize and, and what to move forward and um, what to put on the next agenda, for example, for the next interim. Um, the also, Karsten, you, you brought up during the last ITF meeting that, uh, that we should pick up the time tag document, for example. Um, yeah, I think it's a good time now to maybe discuss how to move forward and what, what, to, what to prioritize. So if you have opinions, David. Yeah, <clears throat> with respect to the time tag, there is no rush because the the tag is registered and, and people are using it. Uh, but it's probably a good idea to uh, pick up what we learned <clears throat> during discussion of, of the date tag and see whether we can apply those learnings to the time tag document and move this forward so it can be a working group uh, document. I don't consider this high priority, but uh, the other way it would be nice if, if we could get this done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I just need to check or remind me when was this, uh, what's the status it, or when was this updated last? Oh. And just check. No. March 2020. March 2020, yeah. So it's expired now. Yeah. On the other hand, the, the registration is in it's the... It's done. Yeah, of course. So there is no... Yeah. But if you could resubmit that, at least we can link it to the tracker and it will appear in the list of documents. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, yeah. And then uh, the Seaboard uh, Pact has been updated last end of September and the CDDL control mid November, so I think for, for last uh, meeting. Um, so I think we had a way for for the uh, for the Seaboard Pact, as we yes. discussed, and we're just waiting on um, on a on a proposal from you, I think. Yes, so we, we have a high level way forward and uh, as usual, turning this into an actual proposal uh, has has some some interesting little issues and uh, maybe I should bring up these issues on the mailing list. Uh, um. <laughs> Please do and maybe we can discuss them during the next interim if you have posted before then. Um, and of course, it's all like the hardest part is to to start to have a proposal, and there's going to be a ton of comments. <laughs> yeah. Or it, it's easier to comment once there is a proposal in place. Right. Um, so you, you mentioned controls. Yes. And um, I think the the next step there is to get implementations of the rest of the document. Uh, so we have implementations uh, 
of uh, most of the controls, but not of the AVNF one. And uh, that, that obviously is a slightly larger chunk to byte. So the the question is, uh, um, is, is that a problem if we wait a little longer until we have uh, implementations of that in place as well? Or do we split it off and, and complete the first one? Um, so as soon as there is a document that actually uses, uh, for instance, the dot feature uh, control, um, it would be nice if, if we were cl getting close to working group last call as well. Yeah, and you mentioned during the meeting that uh, a ASDF working group uh, uses it, right? Yes. So what do you know what the timeline for that one is? Do you know when? Uh, um... We think we will have a working group last call in fall. Okay. Um, th there might be some moves to accelerate this. There might be some moves to wait a little longer. I, I, it's, it's a bit hard to predict, but right now I'm, I'm personally still um, planning with September. Okay. But uh, then I guess um, that, like, my personal preference would be to keep it in one document rather than split it up. Then it, again, it depends on you because, <laughs> or whoever is implementing, it would be better to have, yeah, uh, being able to move forward at the same time, obviously. So Andrew Weiss has been uh, quite uh, quick in implementing other parts of this document. So uh, maybe we can nudge him a bit and ask him whether he wants to do the ABNF part as well. That'd be great. Uh, be able to to bring him, Carsten. I will nudge him. Okay, great. Awesome. And I think that was it for working group documents. Um, is there anything about working, like, is there anything that we need that would be good to have, like, more resources or, uh, for example, for the OID document, I realize that we probably need more people looking at the document. Do you feel like, does anybody feel like it would be good to have more people participating or um, set up better communication with, for example, uh, other working groups or... Yeah, there, there is no OID working group, uh, but of course there is a lot of distributed knowledge about ASON object IDs in, in the security area. Mm -hmm. And it, it's good to have uh, Russ on board here, um, but I think it would be, be useful to have a couple more people who grow, grew up with the, the odd uh, concept yeah. comment on the thing. And, and my question is, how do we reach them? What, what should we do or what should I do? Um, what can we do to, to make this uh, go uh, progress? Faster. If, you want, if you want to talk to, to all the security people, you talk to Sark. <laughs> so yes. um, maybe if we have the next version of that and, and are thinking well, this is now ready for working group last call from the working group's point of view, uh, we could point Sark to it and, and ask if other people have any opinions on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean... Uh, uh, Sorry, go ahead. Just, are you asking about just o OIDs or about CBOR in general? Well, the, the OID was an example for, for CBOR. Uh, but since we're starting a new year, I, you know, I'm just wondering, uh, like th this working group, in my opinion, it's worked very well and has progressed and has done a lot of good stuff. Um, but it's it's good to keep uh, keep in mind, okay, what can we do to to make it um, even better. For example, for the OID document, 
well, we need a couple more eyes to get it. So how do we reach these people? Um, so my suggestion is that actually we should do a presentation on CBOR, including OIDs at SAG as a standard encoding and, and just more focused on the security advantages of a standard encoding. Um, and maybe talk a little bit, it will be a bit more of a general talk because uh, what I think is that the parts that of the ITF that know CBOR know it well, and the parts that don't know the CBOR don't know it at all. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's some advantages to uh, uh, standardized encoding, self-describing encoding, especially when it comes to extensions and getting them right. And I don't think everyone has, you know, <clears throat> if you look at the six man discussion, I don't think everyone understands that. Which six man discussion? Uh, there's a six man discussion a month or two ago about uh, a a generalized router advertisement that would have a CBOR encoding, but, for instance. I think it sounds good. Uh, it's a good idea. Would you be willing to take the lead on this, Michael? Or or with Justin or uh, uh, I would I certainly be else. willing to to uh, speak and contribute it, but I think I'm going to need a little bit of help. Uh, so yeah, I could take the lead on that, but um, ask me again in two weeks. <laughs> so I Kasten, had a about it. I, I certainly can help. I have uh, some slides on this, so um, I think we can build something from that. Yeah. I remember that, uh, Carsten, you did a CBOR tutorial a long time ago before CBOR was a working group. Yes. Um, so. But that's maybe going into a little bit too much detail. Yeah, because yeah, probably the whole package probably should be below one half hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, exactly. So it's not a tutorial. It's a, an overview. Um, the other thought I had, um, Francesca, is so I've been through about six uh seabor libraries in rust and c and um they're definitely not all equal all equal <laughs> um and i would say some of them are actually perhaps actively hostile to the what i think of the seabor um um good points um um so I don't know what we can do in terms of welcoming some more implementers into uh, maybe not the mailing list, but maybe at least the GitHub to deal with some things. In particular, I think that there's the issue of so-and-so says that they'd really like to have, for instance, Seabor tags in this implementation, but so-and-so thinks it's irrelevant to the whole discussion. Um, and um, it would be very useful if somehow that could come into the working group as a discussion. Um, um, so, so sometimes the people that involved are, don't know who they are, who's who. Mm -hmm. So random posts to GitHub threads don't always meaning, aren't always meaningful. You know, it's like the guy who uh, there's the great Twitter, you know, thing of someone arguing over the author with the author of some thing about how they don't know anything about it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good point, and it links to what I was saying before, right? Um, question is how to <clears throat> how to get implementers to participate. Um, I think we should do an implementation survey. We should ask them to tell us what they've implemented, what they haven't implemented, what they don't intend to implement. Okay. Um, let me see something. Yeah, maybe it's not that great an idea to ask people what they don't implement to uh, plan to implement. 
because people usually don't make that kind of plan until you ask them about it. Well, so for instance, the Rust Surdes will never implement tags. Actively, they've, they've made it a, a design decision that it does not work and they cannot implement tags. Right. Okay. So that is a serious, you know, knife in the back to the whole process. Um, because that's the standard way of getting, of annotating things in Rust to get things uh, serialized is to do it with Surgy. So unfortunately, that means that in this case, we have this problem if we want to have, you know, implement, if, if we just want to, serialized structures to disk and back into rust with seaboard well that's great but you could do it with any any process um it's it's this, the tags become so important when you want to communicate with other implementations with a protocol and so suddenly we can't do that with that so that's a problem that's a conscious decision that they've decided we're not doing this mm -hmm. so in a while ago in 2017, we started this uh, implementation matrix for Seaboard before. Um, yeah, to, 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 uh, to get implementations, actually. And let me post it. Um, would this be like some sort of continuation of this effort? Uh, to reach out to implementers and uh, or what else would you want to see here, for example? If you're trying to share something, I'm not seeing it, but I, I um, sent it to the chat. Okay. So uh, this is the, the, the approach of this implementation matrix is to to come from an enumeration of uh, CBOR features. And I think the the idea of doing an implementation survey uh, would actually come from the other end and uh, discuss uh, how, how are people designing APIs uh, for, for CBOR implementations. And not all CBOR implementations are CBOR implementations. They often are implementations of a set of uh, encoding uh, mechanisms, and um, it, it probably would be a good idea to have this this API side uh, survey, because that that's really the the, the problem with uh, putting tags in thirty is not that this is somehow hard to to implement or something. It's just that the the API is not designed to to enable that. Yeah, sounds like a good idea. Um, yeah, and the problem, of course, is that if you have to look at APIs in, in 30 programming languages, uh, you need somebody who's really polyglot. Yeah, <laughs> no, I think the, the good idea would be to reach out to implementers and ask them to <laughs> to answer the survey, not to try find out the answer ourselves. Um, the question is um well i think two questions one we would have to relate survey and two we would have to uh to contact the implementers which is not hard but might take a little bit of time to do yeah and then we have to process the input and then we have to process hard. the input <laughs> right right So, um, and also for Seaboard implementations, I always refer to Seaboard.io implementations page. Um, and I don't know if there is anything more that should be added here. Probably, I don't know how up to date you keep that page, Karsten. Well, I usually react to, to pull requests. Uh -huh. um, okay. So the the part that uh, we haven't done yet is actually putting tags in the other sense of that word um, in there. So people who 
who look uh, for for an implementation that actually can do tags the way they are used in in protocols uh, can can slog through the long list and and find those implementations that do something for them um, so we would have to develop a couple of tags where we can ask uh, the the implementers do you actually qualify uh, for that and if we don't get an answer to a question like that then we can tag it as unmaintained or something like that Mm -hmm. um, so that, that would be a, a quite significant effort, but it's probably worth it. Something that something that could ease that effort, or at least make it give us more bang for the buck, is we could try to combine this in at least in the technologies we employ uh, with the work that we've started in about co-op. Uh, I think Francesca and I have started a list of of questions we have for implementations and and implementations, so we could build this matrix or this tagging, and at, at least then we could we could reuse all the research on development and tooling. Sounds good. So maybe having a draft for the the implementation survey. Um, so we can explain our questions a little bit better would be a good thing. Yes. Who would like to give it a shot? My, you're suddenly quiet. Um, so I, 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 I did say that I would think about the... Um, SAG presentation. Um, yes. And so you're asking, you're suggesting that we put together an ID which contains our survey questions. Um, yeah, I, I could start that. Um, I don't think I can finish it, but I can certainly start wait, it. Wait, okay. So that's why I started by saying let's prioritize. Yeah. Right? <laughs> because obviously we can't do everything at a time. And we can also, like, okay, we are, I think, eight today. Yeah. Uh, we, we can definitely suspects. Uh, like summarize and, and hopefully get more people to participate and get involved involved. Um, but uh, at least to start with for this like API survey, um, I think it would be good if um, you could. I mean, you or Carsten or whoever has a clear idea could sketch something um, and then we can go from there. Yeah. What? Yeah. So I, I, I'll prepare some thoughts for two weeks from now um, and um, a slide or two and um, we can figure out where we can go from there. That sounds good. Uh, also, we can like uh, I think it's good to do. Um, we don't necessarily have to do this before. Prioritization wise, I think, uh, for, for March meeting where we can also um, prioritize it during the working group meeting. Yeah, I think good to me. This, is a, this is a 2020, 2021 effort. I'll take yes. that well to get the right year yes. right, right, won't it? Um, <clears throat> Uh, I think it's not, yeah, it's not something that we're racing to do for March. I think it's something we, we want to show significant progress at the end of the year. Um, I don't know if this is something that we would publish. I think uh, as an as an RFC, I don't think so. Um, I think that it's just marketing, if you like. Mm -hmm. Technical marketing. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Carson, that was your, your idea to have an internet draft but also a uh, document in the GitHub vine, like whatever works, whatever is easiest. I mean, there is some, some, something associated to um, keeping it alive and uh, submitting a new version, et cetera, that just you don't have that type of pressure with, with the GitHub document. But yeah, let's, start with some ideas and then go from there. Um, sounds good. 
Okay, but thank you for that, Michael. Um, good to have more more idea on how to how to move forward the working group. Um, Francesca, yeah. um, to spin back for a minute to the uh, pre overview, uh, which may or may not be the right word for SAG. Um, I would suggest that that be the first of several and that other area wide uh, groups like dispatch and so on. Um, it would be a real good idea to carry that too, because I agree with Michael. There are a lot of people in ITF and the rest of the world who know what CBOR is and appreciate some of its merits. And then there are a whole lot who know nothing about CBOR, which remind, it amazes me at this point, but it's true. And I don't think they realize, honestly, that there's a standards based open standard for a better way to do um, strong on the wire encoding. Mm. Okay, so even more marketing, if I understand. Yeah, and... I'm suggesting that we use the SAG and the feedback from that to polish that and make it a perennial or a recurring activity and take it around to other area specific groups uh, like dispatch um, so, to to make people a little more aware that there's this tool and there are many library implementations and more coming. Mm -hmm. So so uh, dispatch might not be the right, uh, the dis dispatch is usually. Yeah, I general. agree. Yeah, but it's probably like area. art area, art area. Yeah, and art area. Probably also routing area. That I was thinking of routing and art in particular, but you know what? There are seven or eight areas I've lost track. Um, and <laughs> and it seems like making, um, you know, making an objective that in the course of 2021 we sort of make the rounds and um, touch all of them once anyway, because. There are thousands and thousands of people participating in ITF one place or another, not just the thousand who show up for a meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and a great many of them in their work may well have no reason to discover the existence or the virtues of CBOR. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds like a good idea. I think it might be good to, to start with SAG. Possibly oh, I agree. Yeah, next, start next with that. And then maybe uh, uh, take one other area. And then again, it depends on which uh, participation or uh, the working group is, is willing to <laughs> to do because, right. um, yeah, we need, we need the people to go up and, and present the slides and uh, make the slides and all of that. So, but it's definitely a good idea, yes. Okay, and we will make sure to, to bring this up again and, and make sure that when the time comes to request a, a, a session, we um, we find uh, some Seaboard volunteer to do that. Great. I was thinking that the presentation could be iteratively polished. That is, it becomes progressively more effective because of feedback when it's presented. Yeah. And I totally I, agree with you, Ira. That's exactly what I think is the right way to do it. I totally agree with mm -hmm. you. Thank you, Michael. And I, I was thinking because you had put a, you know, reach out to other SDOs, uh, um, specifically of contacts that I and my immediate colleagues in Trusted Computing Group have with Global Platform, although they're well aware generally of CBOR, but um, Etsy, which has lots of groups who aren't aware of CBOR and 3GPP and so on. And um, they, because um, in particularly in 3GPP, they tend to um, subscribe to not invented here. They go on inventing unique crypto algorithms for no clear reason. Mm -hmm. 
the reasons are clear. They're just not sensible. Thank you. That's right. But I don't want to say that. <laughs> but I'll agree. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, the next point on the agenda was actually seaboard use in other SDOs. And this point was, I think, when we or Carsten suggested it, this is a recurring point. It's about, um, if I understood correctly, um, seaboard use in other SDOs. So keeping track, seaboard CDTL, keeping track of. Uh, who is making use of it? Right. Uh, but it's, I mean, it's a good point that it would be good to to reach out. Um, but yeah, I, I, I have a harder time seeing how we do that. I'm all I, open to suggestions. I, I, I think that aside from people telling us that they're doing it um, and us noticing that it's happening. Um, I think that ultimately it involves um, probably chairs and other people um, simply making, uh, um, you know, it's, it's about, you know, personal contacts, which we don't get to do until four yeah. more months. Um, mm -hmm. and, and then, you know, it, it it might be that um <clears throat> i don't know i'm imagining some kind of seabor announce mailing list or something like this but i probably that's not quite right but um but eff effectively it's it's somebody who has a list of contacts uh that you know we would we would communicate with um mm -hmm. at you know strategic times only um and that would be about it, right? Tell us how it's going. Give us your feedback. Did you know that there was a new RFC, et cetera, right? Yeah. So, so I mean, in theory, we do a bit of that in our Seabor mailing list, but obviously, that our contacts or whoever this, uh, like these people, connection people, are not in the Seabor mailing list because it's also technical discussions, et cetera. Right, so, so so they either don't want to be inundated, or they think they're going to be inundated, is the one side, and the other side is that, you know, some entities are just email phobic, <laughs> and yeah. and many of us get too much email because not of the Seabor mailing list, but because of dozens of other mailing lists, not just in IETF, um, and the collective effect is. Uh, I have 40 to 60 new non-junk mails every morning when I open my email and I have to wade through them. And and I have to wade through them because at least a half a dozen contain something I really don't want to miss. <laughs> um, so it's a burden. And so I think people who are active in public standards get a bit phobic about subscribing to yet another mailing list for fear that it's one of those that will have, you know, five messages a day. Mm -hmm. I was thinking, Michael and Francesca, also that we all have uh, colleagues one way and another who are active in other SDOs uh, because that's their day job or their interest or both. And um, those sorts of contacts reaching out to somebody to say, could you speak to the chair of the such and such working group and perhaps take this canned presentation and we'll get Michael or Karsten or someone who could answer beyond the second question, um, the questions to um, join you and make a presentation. I was specifically thinking about 3GPP SA3 who badly need their consciousness raised about the fact that there is a world outside of 3GPP. Yes. Um, well, I and, have I have a lot of colleagues that that are in uh, in the 3GPP SA3 um, group, so the security group. Yeah. I don't know if that's 
that would be a starting point, but. I, my uh, co-chair and close colleague of 10 years in Trusted Computing Group, Trusted Mobility Solutions, um, has been for 24 years writing 3GPP and pre predecessor standards in telecom. And I'm pretty sure would be happy to facilitate that. And he is also active in Etsy Security of AI, who would be some other good people to reach out to, um, and and some other Etsy activities. That'd be great. So once we have this presentation, we can definitely um, um, uh, send it out and and get yeah. to get questions and feedback, and that'd be great. So I think the first step would still be to 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 do the or to to decide. Oh, sure. Yeah. As, a, as a group effort, not only on one person, obviously, but no, no, I know. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and to present it to um, SOG and, um, and incorporate feedback because it will be quite um, literate feedback, I'm sure from the SOG community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds good. I think uh, Christian is taking a lot of notes. Thank you, Christian. <laughs> Thank you, Christian. This will, this will be very helpful when we when we go back and and uh, see what we were saying. Okay. Uh, I think we can move on to the next topic, which is what Carsten or yes, the Google Doc that Carsten uh, posted to the mailing list. <clears throat> yeah, so um, something is interesting is is uh, happening that, that <clears throat> I I had, didn't anticipate would be happening, but uh, actually I like the the outcome. Um, th there are a number of of extension points, well defined extension points, in in CBO and and CDDL, and uh, people are shaping proposals for extensions in such a way that they just fit these extension points. So as a working group, we can be a bit lazy because uh, some extensions are, are simply uh, done in a way that we we can sit there and, and wait until things are registered and so on. Uh, but uh, maybe occasionally we want to to keep a little bit more uh, control or oversight or whatever. And uh, the proposal that I referenced is an example of uh, something that where, where it probably would be good if more people were, were thinking about this. Um, so th there are several languages out there that that would benefit from a CBOR way of, of representing their, their language uh, structures. And uh, what uh, CBOR doesn't have is discriminated unions. So um, we have unions in the sense that you can uh, simply um, define a type in your implementation or in your CDDL uh, that, that simply allows one thing or the other thing. Uh, but if the, the one thing and the other thing look the same in CBOR, so for instance, both are integers, um, then uh, you need some discrimination uh, technique for that. And obviously the discrimination technique that, that is native to, to CBOR is the tag. Uh, but uh, defining a tag is, is a relatively um, high effort uh, global activity. And in many cases, uh, you want to run a discriminated union as part of a specific program, so you 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 don't really involve want to involve the rest of the world with with the fact that you have three different kinds of integers that that can go into that structure. Um, so the the proposal here is to come up with a set of tags that are kind of anonymous, uh, but they they are uh, chosen in such a way to be relatively efficient. 
so you are not penalized too much by, by using them for discriminating uh, unions. And uh, yeah, you can, you can look at the proposal, how they, they propose to do this specifically. I have a few little suggestions that, that I could make at this point. They already took some of my, my earlier suggestions, uh, but I think fundamentally what they are proposing is, is quite sound. If you agree that uh, having compiler-generated discriminated unions is something that, that CBOR should, should support. So my, my plan for, for supporting this from the working group was to put it into a draft. Uh, right now, I, I was proposing to put it into notable tags, but we could also do a separate draft. I, I don't have a strong opinion uh, on that. And uh, just uh, uh, at some point, uh, turn it into a working group document so people see, okay, this is not just a, a tag that somebody has registered, but that, that is actually meant to be um, CBOR's uh, main support, go-to support for compiler-generated discriminated unions. Um, I gotta admit I haven't read this in the quick time, but um, how is, I mean, the kind of the thing that comes to my mind when I think of the problem is just put it into, a, basically have a tagged two tuple. Is this just more efficient or is this in addition to that something else as well? It's more efficient. Okay. So um, th th there are two mistakes that, that I made in, in 2013 when I thought about CBOR. And one of the two mistakes is that um, I, I didn't think, or actually I did think, but I didn't think it was worth the effort adding it, uh, about tags with an arity of two. So tags uh, in CBOR only have an arity of one, uh, which means they are kind of inefficient if uh, um, you use the pretty common design pattern of, of tagging a pair of, of some things, which, by the way, CBOR does in, in its tags uh, 4 and 5, uh, for instance. Um, so uh, using the, the number inside the tag as, as a crutch to, to get the same uh, uh, kind of functionality is the way to go. Um, and they are proposing to reserve uh, some tag space in the one plus one uh, space and some tag space in the one plus two space to make it easy for, an, for a compiler uh, to, to generate these discriminated union tags. So, Carson, as what? I understand sure. it, um, that you, the reason that you're, you're suggesting that we need a, quote, standardized tag for these alternatives is, I think, because the compiler is going to keep track of where they're used, um, and we wouldn't want the compilers to be coming, coming to IANA to allocate them. <laughs> um, but, but specifically, it sounds to me like you're also saying that, that the protocol designers shouldn't be burdened with describing this because it's it's the the the, ish, the the detail is really buried in the compiler not not the protocol yeah let let me give you an example where it actually would would uh, be of interest to a protocol designer so you know that that yang also has type uh, unions and uh, now, for, for some reason, these are non-discriminated unions. But let's assume Yang had discriminated unions, in, in, in which case we would probably define a set of tags specifically for Yang to represent them. And um, I think it would be nice to just have a, a standard onboard feature of, of CBO that can be used for, for protocols like that, like that as well. But that means that those protocols do not become uh, composable anymore. Yeah. 
What do you mean by become? What you would need to do a lot to make Yang composable? Yeah, but you can't. So, in 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 the Yang case, yes. But in the, if you think of more general general protocol, if you're thinking of general protocols that might, at some point, in, uh, use some uh, take take something else inside there. Um, they would need to say, and starting from here, now the, the general tags mean this protocol's thing, whereas the whereas tags the, the t t tags as described in Zbor can be used in any context, and maybe they are not valid there, but at least they are semantically unique. Yeah, so my, my suggestion would be if you want that, if you need that, go ahead and res register unique tags. Mm -hmm. uh, but if if you actually have an environment where uh, these compiler-generated discriminators make sense, um, then, then you have something you can use without having to register something that's specific to your environment. Uh, makes sense, yeah. So the, the, the assumption, the, the unsaid assumption is that these tags would be interpreted in context. Um, so okay. if you have two discriminated unions and they are used in two different contexts, they might even actually use the same numbers. Yeah, because it might also be buried within another tag that says it's a apple object versus a what are a vegetable object versus a a fruit object within it you then these alternatives is add the apple alternatives and the orange alternative is that what i right. understand yes yeah okay but Carsten, what you said sounded like a good idea to, to do. A, a, I would do a different draft rather than the notable okay. tags and submit it and post it to the mailing list. Or, yeah, help the authors do that. Um, yeah, and we maybe can continue this discussion offline or at another interim when that is done. Yeah, and, and uh, up to then, please do have a look at this Google Docs document and send comments to the list or to the authors using the suggestion feature. Sounds good. And we have five minutes left. I thought today would be a quick meeting for some reason. I don't know why you had this weird, strange idea. Okay. Uh, last five minutes, I just wanted to say that um, we uh, chairs have to, we haven't done yet, but we have to request a session. And in the code EMD, I posted the, uh, um, the list of working groups that are our usual conflicts. And um, we also have a comment about any security and IoT related buff to, to avoid conflict with those. Uh, if there is anything that is not here that you would like to be added, please let us know so we can do that. And um, yeah, that was it. You want to say anything else, Christian? No, anybody else wants to? Say anything, add anything. Okay, then I think we can close the meeting and I will see you all in two weeks. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye bye. See you there.